Well, the first fly I'm gonna make is, I call it the miserable magnet. Pretty excited about our guest tonight. Who we've had before is Jeff Hubbard. I, yes. You all should know who Jeff is. Um, he looks really good in this shot oh, you right do. now. Really good. You it's look like so professional with that. I developed this fly uh, quite a number of years ago, probably 10, 12 years ago, and um, it's a it's a winter fly for swinging. Um, I kind of based it off, kind of looking somewhat like a goby with the the sculpin type head and the black you know it's kind of slender in the rear and then it just you know has more bulk in the front like a goby pattern would be but the biggest key i think with this fly is um the flash that i add to it and having the blue um in low light conditions like we see all winter long and unfortunately we don't haven't seen it much this year but a lot of the snow would you know you get that low light effect with you get a lot of snow on the ground and you know dreary days and i found this fly to be very effective and i think a lot of it just had to do with that the way that the i put the holographic flashaboo on here with the silver and then the blue um flash and then the holographic raspberry i guess you would call it or purple flash and uh yeah basically purple you can't go wrong with purple and blue in the winter i agree for swinging flies yeah 100 percent and I think this fly, I've, I mean, I know Brian and I have a mutual client that fishes it even on the Manistee, and it fishes well. And I think you guys have even caught fish in the spring with it, we like have. drop backs and stuff. Yep. So no, it definitely is a good drop back fly as well. So it proven, proven pattern. Yeah, it's proven. It is. Yeah, I've done really well with it. And it's, like I said, I kind of came up with it. I tied it. And, you know, back when we actually had winter you know 10 odd years ago it was a miserable day it was like one of those days and i've learned like i love to walk in and fish like i mean i still go fishing any chance i get well, the pm's I, a great river yeah for i that. love to walk and wade the pm and yeah. you know plenty of people have probably seen me down there and but i've learned that the nastier the weather the less people there are and the better shot i have of you know swinging a fish up walking in so i came up with this it was like just a darn nasty day you know a weekday and i went walking in there was no tracks in the snow i had it all to myself and i think i hooked yeah hooked and landed two fish in the first two holes with this fly and oh i my mean gosh. it was so cold and nasty like the second fish by the time i tailed it because i don't bring a net when i'm swinging i just you know try to tail them and yeah bring them to shore and then let them go and i mean my hands were so frozen i was like that was it and i went back to the car i mean instantly but yeah so I kind of came up with the miserable part because it just seemed like any, you know, miserable winter day or rainy day, you know, good steelhead weather. Perfect yeah. I mean, that's how weather. we see yep. steelhead right. weather, right? If the that's suffrage right. factor is high, exactly, right, you're going to catch the fish. High potential. You have to suffer, <laughs> and, and usually the fish bite. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of how I came up with it. And it's a really simple fly. And, I mean, the cool thing about actually both these flies that I'm going to tie tonight you know, you can be creative. You can change colors on it if you want, like color of the rabbit. You could do it in olive. You could do it in purple. Um, but yeah, that's just a good low light fly, nasty day. And I'm tying this on a shank. Um, it's just a 40 millimeter shank, but I'm still, you can see it's not a really, you know, super long fly. So it's, it's easy to cast. It's not gonna, you know, be real hard to get off of the water. And the steps are pretty simple. So pretty much the material is black rabbit, like I said, and we're gonna use some blue schlopplin. And then for the head, I just use black ice dub. And then the body we use um, black UV chenille, which I really like because it has almost like a, a purple gray kind of hue to it. Yeah. So it catches the light too as it's fishing across. This is like an ASMR microphone, so we hear every little. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. Like, I've had some comments over the years of like, wow, we can hear that just every like single wrap of thread. We were <laughs> popping kinda, popcorn. Yeah, it's kinda exactly. Cool. It, it, you know, I'm surprised Storm didn't wake up thinking it was going to be something to eat. So well, I got to put my old man glasses on. It's okay. We all have to have those crutches. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is basically it's a shank fly, as you can see. And what I use 
for the trailer hook is you could use this is just 50 pound braided line or you could use power pro or some people like to use wire too um but like brian and i were talking about earlier um i tie all my flies for my guide season i rarely ever buy flies so the fastest and simplest way is kind of what i like to do so whatever i kind of have on hand that's what i use you know whatever's at the house so i just get a big strain of the 50 pound braid and then what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna take it and just make a an overhand knot in it not too close to the loop so then when i cinch this down it's going it's not going to slip as much and you could put glue on it too head cement but the key is is that's a smart move i've definitely had a snag or something where i pull really hard and you know gosh it pulls the hook out yeah yep. yeah i've I, had that i come actually, back with just a shank it's not ideal so i've had it happen with wire yeah yeah it's like kind of these wires, wires slip. yeah i mean like you can't get a good the grip beetle on, on and the wire a lot and i mm -hmm. kind of stopped using it because i had a couple times where that that happened i think one time i was just pulling on it and yeah it, I'm like, holy cow, I cinched that down really well, and that shouldn't have done that, and I did. Well, yeah. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is um, wrap the shank. I like to use, I use this probably for almost all my flies, especially like egg flies and streamers. Is a, I use a heavy 140 thread, denier mm -hmm. thread, um, because you really got to cinch stuff down, especially, you know, egg flies. And whenever you're working with rabbit, too, you want to, do a few wraps because a lot of times you'll find with rabbit if you don't stitch it down tight enough and you don't have a good thread base it's going to want to tend to spin on you so i wrap it quite a bit let's get a good wrap just like so and then what i do to put the braid on is I'm just going to, I'm going to basically measure it out about the length of the, the shank. So when it sets back, I don't want it super long. I just want it so it's a little bit longer than my rabbit strip. And that way the rabbit's not going to get coiled in it. Or sometimes if you have it too long, you'll find like when casting, um, the the actual shank will get caught up, up yeah. into the... The front of the fly especially if you have stuff like this like if you got some type of dubbing on it you know it'll it'll actually catch it like so so you don't want to have it super long oh i gotta pick it up there we go so yeah so i'll just kind of take this and i just come right up through the eye oh you go through the eye too okay yeah yeah, yeah. So I'll just kind of come up like that. You really don't want to lose fish. No. <laughs> yeah, boo. And then where I made that knot, I'm just going to cinch down. And you can even make more than one knot in here, you know, just to guarantee it even more. But I'm just going to cinch it super tight. Jeff, do you tie this without the hook on there and put the hook on after? Yeah, a lot of times. So you don't skewer yourself very often. No, exactly. <laughs> so that's basically what I did is I just folded it, went up through, folded this access, which I'll end up just cutting off. But yeah, and then I got the knot. And I'm just, you know, and at this point you could put, you know, glue on it, head cement. And make sure too, when you're working with like, you know, braid or like Power Pro, you want to have a scissors that will cut that. Don't be using your nice fly right. tying scissors to cut through that because it's going to dull them out. And um, so, yeah, so that's how I would have it. I got my loop. Here, I'll show you, like, if you put the... I can probably tie this with it and not get poked. You oh, don't have yeah. to make a trip to the ER. That would be horrible. So this fly, I actually run, I'll run it with the hook up. Because it's not going to have weight on it. Sure. And in the winter, I kind of like, whoops, having that hook shank up because. Logs and. and yeah, whatnot. logs, and then two, you get 
sometimes you get those picky fish that kind of like to pluck, pluck, pluck. Yep. So that's how it would look. Perfect. That looks like great. That. And what pound braid are you using? It's 50. Perfect. Yeah. So I'll try to tie it. This is a hook I actually had in the place, so I would not be fishing this hook because it's got a little bend to it. But yeah, so just like that. And then next step is we're just going to put the rabbit tail on. And this is just a rabbit strip. It's not a cross cut, just a black rabbit. And then what I like to do here, the same thing. I don't want to tie it on, you know, past the hook because then what's going to happen is you're going to get that, you know, could wrap around the braid or whatnot. So what I do is I'm going to measure it out. Same thing about the shank of the the length of the shank of the hook and then I just come back and I'm going to put just a kind of spread it apart a little bit hmm. hopefully I don't get hooked <laughs> we get the first aid kit out here yeah, yeah. we can show we're all, people we're how to them use now anyways, right? well we're first aid certified That's we'll, right. be, yeah. we'll stop the bleeding CPI. for sure you need a tourniquet, sir. We need sir. a tourniquet and, uh, <laughs> and and some piece of cheesecloth or what kind of cloth was that? Like chamois cloth? Chamois cloth. Did you see that? Yeah. Like, I, I don't like, remember that what? part. Yeah. I got to find that. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, well. Basically, I'm making a bunch of wraps where I kind of spread it apart. I'll show you guys again. And then I'm just cinching it tight because I don't want that to spin. Sometimes if, like I said, if you don't have a lot of thread wrap on the shank or on a hook and you're tying rabbit to it, you'll notice like when you go to do those first wraps, it wants to just fall either, right. you know, away from you or towards you, a lot of times towards you. So that's pretty simple. And you can see I have it. So just that little bit of tip of the fiber is just kind of into the hook. So it's not going to get into the way of the getting wrapped up into the hook. And then what I'm going to do is take this, which I use this stuff for everything. I love the polar chenille. The polar all the chenille different is colors. so nice. It builds up enough body. It has, you know, a fine offering of colors. Mm -hmm. A fine offering. A fine I like offering. that. You like that? So I'll just take a, cut a little strip of it. And I'm just going to tie it in at the tip. Pretty easy peasy. And then I'm just going to work my thread about halfway onto the shank here. So I don't want to overcrowd everything and leave a little bit room for the end. And then I'm just going to take this and just kind of palmer it and wrap it, you know, wrap it towards the eye of the shank. And you can kind of fluff off all these little fibers with your fingers. So it's almost like hackle in a way. It is like hackle. It gives it a little bit of body. Right. Are, are you using an octopus hook for that? Yeah, so basically almost all of um, my stinger hooks is I use um, like a an owner's number two mm -hmm. or an octopus like a gami um this year i found with the uh the lower clear water i was having of you know on the pm especially because i mean by that time it's like a spring creek when the water right. gets super low and clear and we were getting a lot of deals swinging where we would have steelhead kind of pull it and you could tell it was a steel because it you know it was a pull it wasn't like like a trout will kind of pluck pluck or right. a steelhead has you know it's putting pretty good tension on it and pulling on it and oh it was such a headache we had so many days where we'd get a lot of pulls but the fish weren't coming back to it and i think it a lot of it was one they would you know pull on it and then they would get to where it was too shallow and just you know go back to the deep or go back to the log that they were hiding under and two they were smaller fish like we talked about earlier right so i actually started downsizing a lot of my flies and even putting you know like using a number four i did that you know I, type of stinger hook. i switched over to four fours this fall mm -hmm. for my swing flies 
Um, and I definitely downsized my flies, and I made them more natural. Yeah, yeah, that was a big you know, key. A lot of olive, a lot, a lot of natural of stuff. And you'll see, like, the next fly that I'm going to make tonight is um, a perfect low-water natural kind of fly. It just, it just works. It's great. So, yeah, I'm just going to tie that off. And then all I do is I kind of take these fibers and evenly just try to pull them to each side. And then I'm just going to take this rabbit strip. So I'm basically giving this fly a little mohawk. I'm just going to bring it back over and just separate it and let it kind of fall back so it'll give that movement, that rabbit will really move a lot in the current. And same thing, just quite a number of wraps and just kind of, you know, cinch it down, pull it tight. And that's it. Well, that looks good. Uh, yeah. So then the next step is adding the sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing that I use for the base layer... Okay, Feenstra. Holo uh, holographic silver. <laughs> and I don't want a lot. Maybe about a, a matchstick size. Because that's the thing, too. Sometimes on the PM, you don't really need a ton of flash. Right. You know, sometimes... You can always cut it off. Exactly. I do that quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a, a good thing to bring up because I always carry like a scissors in my boat bag yes i do the same thing like i'll even if i have like if it might feel like my tail's too long yeah or anything. exactly Absolutely. i'll trim it or i'll trim more I'll trim you know, i don't need this out. much flash or, right Absolutely. yeah it's it's a handy thing to do i do the know? same thing with my dry flies in the summer and mm -hmm. you know it's it's nice to be able to, to know when you need to alter your flies so yeah i'll just take about width of maybe a match yeah and I just put it on. Looks to be about 15, maybe 20. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, no more than 18, right? You don't want to have more than 18 strands in that clump. Bad luck. <laughs> it is bad luck. <laughs> And then after that, we're going to add the electric blue electric flash. Electric blue. Everybody big fan. Do the electric, big fan of the electric blue. Electric slide. <laughs> Matt, I think you were the king of the electric slide. Mm, I don't remember that. No? Maybe the a wedding? <laughs> maybe the wedding was. crashers? I think that was like the electric slide. Maybe at Joe's wedding. Maybe at Joe's wedding. <laughs> no, I didn't get invited. <laughs> <laughs> I had to leave early anyways. <laughs> I Just got to like sit so. next to a bunch of my high school teachers. Nice. It was great. So, And if you wanted to add more, basically all you do then is you would just take this. Ooh, that looks her back, nice. And tie her down. We'll put some more on. We'll just double it up. Double or nothing, right? That's right. This is the hard one to get. The cranberry. Yeah, the, oh, the don't. Holograph. Uh, I know. Don't is it raspberry it or is it cranberry? That's not cranberry. Oh, no, that's it's, ra it's that like is, a raspberry. That's raspberry. So this one I don't go too crazy on. But I do think this is... I think that one, that color definitely makes a difference in this Yeah, fly. it just kind of... It's super easy to use, never sticks together. Yeah, look at it. It's all... <laughs> Did you have that sitting in the it's dashboard of your truck or... Just bought it. The teal does that as well. Yeah, the teal does that. I don't know why. Maddening. So I won't double this up. I'm just going to put a little bit of it. Just like so. And just make sure you get this. When you're tying this, you want to get it wrapped pretty good. Because you don't want this stuff pulling out either. So that's basically it. 
a good flashaboo wing. Then for the collar, what I like to do is this blue schloppen. But I want to find something that, like even marabou would work good for this if you really wanted to bulk it up more. But I just find a real webby feather that's pretty long. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of palmer it back. And I'm going to tie it in from the tip. And I want basically the glossy side up when I tie it in because I'm palmering it forward. That's like a good you, point. Yeah, if you look at a feather, a lot of times you're going to have kind of a shiny the top of it and then the bottom of it's a little duller so you want to just tie it in from the tip and then what I'm going to do is just take it just palmer it forward and kind of just work it with your fingers. You can just work that so it falls back. So I'm not going on top of it. I'm just kind of working it forward every that time I great. turn it. Yeah, I mean, you can make this a fly right here. You know, it's kind of more of a Western kind of look just with the collar on it. Just like that. Kind of has that spake kind of look. Everyone loves blue. I just think it's super, super traditional. Looks awesome. Yeah, I think in the past we've done the Heckler, yes. which is blue and black. And we and did the Blue one. Moon. You could find a lot of those even on my website with the recipes. And we did one that was, it had. It was kind of natural and olive as well with some orange in it. I remember that. Yep. Yeah, the orange. The Pugsley. 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 The one with the rubber rubber yes. legs. Yeah. If That's people a good if fly. people did want to check your website out, what would that where would they go, Jeff? It's outfittersnorth.com. Perfect. Yep. I know you have a fly box section mm -hmm. there with a bunch of patterns, a bunch of recipes, all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, you guys so. should check out Jeff's website. It's really nice. And I'm adding more stuff to it even this winter. When we had that cold spell, I took some time and actually you know like i said i tie a lot of flies pretty much all winter for my season i started tying all these flies and i'm like well i should you know start writing some recipes down and so we're doing some more stuff on the website soon too so and soon to be Great. youtube soon I to heard. be youtube yeah we're trying to build up a i had a youtube page for a while but i kind of you know just stopped putting stuff but we're kind of bringing that back to and we're going to do it outfitters north youtube page and um doing some fly tying stuff and some tips tactics i mean just you know with fishing and plus gear you know what do we what do i like yeah. to use you yeah. know like, like this fly is actually on my website talking now about you know fishing flies for different water depth so on my website this was kind of the first version of it and you can see it's just tied with a possum head the head of it you know, it's we put that right awesome. up, but right up against the other yeah. fly you're tying, like and I'll I'll, yep. like, I'll put it on the on the close there up you can. Go. There you go. So okay. you can see the difference. Yeah. So this I would fish this fly a lot. You know, when I want to kind of stay above woody debris, or if I know that particular hole has a snag in it. You know, because swinging flies isn't just what I do. I do a lot of indicator fishing too. Yeah. So I kind of, you know, over the years you get an idea of where the snags are and where they're not. But two swinging flies, it allows me to swing a lot of, I can swing a lot of holes that a lot of people can't fish with an indicator or a chuck and duck rig. Right. Because they so are staying above. So I learned to kind of, I'll change flies a lot, really more based on where I'm fishing. You know, like if the current's faster, then I add the bullet weight. If I'm fishing more tail outs or the water's shallower like it was this fall, then I'm fishing a lot more stuff like this 
that has the possum and I might still add this tiny bullet weight but still that possum's going to keep it you know buoyant enough where it's going to keep it off the bottom and off the debris so then what I'm going to add it this is just um black ice dub a lot of it Ooh. a whole bag of it a whole bag and this stuff's pretty cool too it has kind of the purple hue to it like the um the chenille did like we used with the the wrap of the body so what I'm going to do here is I get a pretty good clump, maybe about, I could probably do all this, about a Sharpie marker width, I guess you could say. Is it a Sharpie Magnum or a Sharpie? Just oh, regular. Geez. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a key step right here. I have a lot of people that ask me, like, how do we, and I'll show you too today how to do the, tonight to do the egg head. But I get this a lot where people are always like, how do you make, you know, those ice dub heads, whether it's an egg head or a sculpin head. And the key is what you want to do is I'm going to get my thread right here in the middle. And it's almost like the same principle of tying an egg fly, you know, of wrapping yarn to make an egg fly. I'm just going to set this right over the top. And what I'm doing is... I'm going to pinch it hard basically around the whole shank with my, my two fingers. And then I'm just going to make a multiple wraps right in the center of it and cinch it down. Just like that. And then all I do is pull. There's You're going to have a lot of access. This stuff's so messy. Like ice stub, it's pretty much all over our house, all over the dog. My daughter's cat used to love to play with all the ice dub and sparkly stuff on my fly tying bench. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip it a little bit, get some of the axe fibers off. And then what I do, so you can see I've already made quite a bulk of a head, and then I just take this and I'm just going to pull it all back and tie off in front of it. It's as simple as that. And then I'll kind of flatten it out a little bit, just like, you know, like a goby is a lot like a sculpin. Sure. And if you really want to see what they look like, you need to check out Kevin Feenstra's book about the bait fish patterns. It's pretty remarkable, all the underwater footage he did. His book is amazing. Yeah, I mean, just the photos are just incredible. And it'll show you what the stuff looks like. And yeah, a goby has, just like a sculpin, a big flat, big round head kind of a grayish black tones to it and you don't want to overcrowd this the schlopping that you tied on the hackle because you want that to have some movement too you don't want it like you know clumped right over it into here you want that to flutter into the current along with that flash that looks really good if i were a fish i'd eat it yeah i mean it's a simple you know, simple guide fly. You could tie a lot of them. Like I said, you can even mix up your colors if you want to do a purple tail or blue. You could do a blue tail even and a black black wrap of the schloppen. And then you just whip finish. So hopefully this helps some of the viewers. And that's the beauty with streamers. I mean, whether you're swinging flies or stripping flies, it's just fun because you can be creative and come up with your own stuff. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's the whole fun about streamer fishing. You can totally use this in um, like endless color variations. Yeah. Same fly. Yeah. Yep. And even the way that I did the rabbit actually is a great way for a lot of your trout streamer patterns. You know, like a zonker strip kind of thing. The sure. way I did that, you could... You know, if you're tying trout streamers, it's the same same steps, yep. basically, to take. That looks good. Thanks, Jeff. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. <laughs>